Matar, and um, I teach digital marketing in the Illich School of Business. So um, if, you're in the, if you're in the business school, please consider taking the course. It's uh, digital marketing introduction uh, for, for undergrads, and it's a social media course for graduate students. Um, LinkedIn has been become a kind of a, one of my favorite social networks. I find myself on it more so than all the other ones now. And I mean, I'm pretty active on all of them. And really that's because I have found myself um, getting a lot more out of it professionally than all of my other social networks. And I've done some, uh, some research. I've, I've conducted some of my own tests, both on my personal page and my um, company, the company pages that I oversee. Um, and I'm gonna share some of those best practices with you here today. To begin with, a couple quick administrative things. Uh, this is part of the graduate school's professional development series. This is a set of events that we are hosting throughout the semester and also into the winter semester. We started last week with a session on the DISC assessment. Uh, I welcome you to check out um, our, our full lineup. You can get to it from gradschool.wayne.edu. There's a, uh, we have a lot of great events coming up throughout the semester. I believe we wrap up right around Thanksgiving and then we will pick it up again in January. So um, without further ado, let's get into the actual stuff here. Um, first off, this is all about branding on social media, specifically LinkedIn. So let's talk about before we actually get into LinkedIn and posting stuff, what do you actually need to build your personal brand. Uh, it's a twofold equation. First off, you have the creating of your network. There is the building strategic and meaningful relationships that lead to new opportunities. And you also have the part of building your personal brand. That is the intentional, consistent, and credible way that you show yourself to the world. And in this case, online. Now, the online persona, which can be both personal and or professional, that is a little bit more specific. Your online persona is going to reflect your personal values and your professional skills. Uh, trying to have one or the other, personal value, personal or professional, that doesn't really show, tell the whole story. And as you've probably seen, over the last 18 months, it can be difficult just to meet somebody and get to know them entirely uh, in a virtual setting. So it's important to show both sides of yourself on your social networks, specifically LinkedIn. Now let's break down that definition of the online persona to begin with. Uh, when you look at your online persona, that is your online personality or profile. It should reflect who you are as a person not just what you do professionally, but also what are, your other, what are your other interests? But it also combines all of this together and it will create a well-rounded individual. Uh, as a former English major, we used to call, we used to have, look at different types of characters that would be in literature. You would have uh, very flat characters that just have one or two personality traits. Then you had other more dynamic round characters that had a lot of different layers to their personalities. Which kind of those do you want to be online? And I can tell you this, from my own experience and having hired a lot of people and um, looking at so many resumes online, uh, it definitely helps to be more of a well-rounded individual. Now that comes from beginning with your personal values. What are your interests and beliefs? You don't need to share all of the specifics and religion and politics but you can have interests and beliefs that are not controversial that people are going to, going to like you for. Um, but then also, who are your friends or acquaintances? Again, you don't need to list specifics, but if you can share the types of people that you engage with on social media, that's going to help others see the, the kind of people that uh, you work with on a regular basis, which we'll look at here additionally a little bit later. And then finally, what goes on in your daily life outside of your work? Do you have kids? Do you play sports? Um, do you have hobbies, other interests? I know for myself, um, I personally have never shared anything about my two kids on LinkedIn, but I've alluded to it. I've 
never shied away from my interest of, of sports on LinkedIn. Um, it doesn't dominate my posts, but again, they contribute to my larger online persona. Because we also have the professional skills. What are those accomplishments, those certifications, or if you're, uh, if you're in, the PhD, in a PhD program here, uh, what, are you, what are you working on in terms of publications? What are your other degrees? What are your other life successes in your professional walk of life? And finally, where have you worked? How have those shaped your current professional persona? And what do you want professional employers to know? Those are all questions that you can answer on your professional profile, on your LinkedIn profile, that will only help potential employers, uh, reviewers, anybody that you consider to be your target audience to better understand you online. Now let's get into building your online brand. There's a lot of different ways to do this. You have your website or your portfolio. Um, that is a uh, pretty, a little bit more time intensive, um, a little bit harder to maintain, but it's a good way that you can share everything that you do. And I highly recommend having an online portfolio for you job seekers, especially those that work in marketing like I do. Um, honestly, no matter what your field is, if it's something that has a digital component, an online portfolio where you can house a more extended version of your uh, resume is going to be helpful. On the other end, you have earned media. Uh, that is very difficult to come by. That's more um, where you're getting quoted. If there's, if there's a, an opinion piece on you, um, if there's kind of a, a thought piece about something that you work on, those are really difficult to come by. And I would imagine for most of the people in this event here today, this probably isn't, that's probably not something to uh, really hang your hat on yet because we like to focus in the middle, something that walks the fine line of earned media and owned media, and that is social media. We're really just gonna talk about LinkedIn today. So social media, it's a free and easy way for the most part to build your online brand, personally, professionally. And what makes it so great and what I believe, why I believe it to be a little bit better than the online portfolio is that you can reach a new audience without doing too much extra work. The online portfolio is great for people that are looking for you online, for potential employers, or if you're really great at search engine optimization for pulling potential customers into you. But a lot less work than that is social media. And you have LinkedIn. You have a, an extremely powerful platform that you can utilize to share your voice, share your professional experience, um, and really build your thought leadership. But one thing to remember is that your different social networks serve different purposes. Now, I I've put kind of the four, still four of the biggest social networks right now. Uh, TikTok has recently joined this conversation. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with the big four, as I like to call them, um, for, I would say, uh, most of the people here. And these are just kind of my, kind of how I look at these, um, these different social networks. First, we have Facebook. I really only will put life events on here. You'll see people that share much more than life events, um, a lot of hot takes, a lot of political opinions. And you'll see, I mean, those, those have good and bad sides. Um, I really consider Facebook to be where I have been friends with people that I don't usually see. And the people that I see more often, I mean, they, I talk to them more, more frequently and they don't need to see the life events because they already know what's going on. But life events are really to keep um, that extended network informed for what's going on. Twitter, that's really the breaking news, current events, memes. It's what you look at um, when you're watching a football game and some crazy play happens. It's what you probably went to during the election last year. If there's something going on in the world, you know that you're gonna be able to get some news on it from Twitter. I know when Kobe Bryant died last year, the number one thing I did was I went to Twitter to look for validation. Then we have Instagram in the lower right. Uh, that's people just posting their daily lives and photos and videos. Uh, there are plenty of, of opportunities to share all of these different uh, 
photographic experiences that you have, whether it be uh, just you, your family, your vacations, uh, even sometimes your professional side, those can all come through on Instagram. And then we have LinkedIn. That is really for everything professional and where we are going to focus today. LinkedIn is the largest professional social network, as we call it. We now see almost seven, almost three quarters of a, mil of a billion members, so 740 million people. And as Google search trend, it's doubled over the last 10 years. That just means that people have been searching for LinkedIn related topics twice as much now as they did in 2011. Uh, I will say as somebody who was a younger professional in 2011, I did not see the value in LinkedIn. I thought it was something that you just had and it was something that, yeah, employers will look it up, but that's about it. It's become much, much more since then because 40% of active LinkedIn users go online every single day. Uh, I know I'm on LinkedIn every single day and have been for the last couple of years, I'd say. Um, I consider it great just not for my own uh, kind of developing my own thought leadership, but also for learning new skills. LinkedIn also has a great academy where you can learn classes, learn skills, sometimes for free. But then this is my favorite one. It's the number one social media site among executives. Now, that doesn't mean that executives aren't on Facebook, but in terms of using social media for a business purpose, this is where you can find them. So I think I've built the case for LinkedIn uh, just as a social network and as a professional social network. But let's go through the steps now to build your brand. One, we have the assembling of a profile. There are lots of different levels of profiles that LinkedIn uses right now. Um, when you first start a profile, it'll say you'll, you'll see a big horizontal bar and you can add different things to your, your page to hit these new milestones. If you get to the very, very, very top level, you'll be what they call an all-star. Um, that is what they call the highest honor and nobody else can see it, but LinkedIn knows it and LinkedIn will reward those who have all-star profiles. Uh, this means an all-star profile means putting your work experience in there, listing your relevant skills, having a profile photo, a background photo, or they, as they call a banner image, um, putting up some actual posts, and then also um, getting some, some sort of endorsements for on skills. You'll see sometimes somebody will endorse you for a skill. So-and-so endorsed Nick for social media. It's really a an altruistic uh, side of the profile. But really, the more that you have on your profile, the, the more LinkedIn is going to reward you. They're gonna give you greater visibility, you're gonna pop up more searches, and you're just gonna be a little bit easier to find by other users. And that's where it's important for you to determine your voice and your niche. Uh, this is a, a five-step process, but really this is gonna be one of the most important things. And that is really answering the question, in what area are you truly the expert? This can be broad, it can be super, super, super niche, um, but it needs to be providing value to your followers and also to people that might stumble upon your content. I follow a guy who works in social media in content marketing and he has 20,000 followers and all he does is post content about how to update and refresh old blog posts. He doesn't talk about writing content. He doesn't talk about promoting it. He talks about updating old blog posts. One of the most niche profiles I've ever seen. And yet he has 20,000 followers, gets hundreds of reactions, dozens of, of comments, every post he puts up. He has found the area where he is an expert. And he knows that that field, the content marketing field, is pretty active on LinkedIn. And you also need to decide what is the type of content that you could speak well to, speak intelligently on, but also have other people want to see what it is that you are, that you're actually putting out there. For me, I've tried a lot of different content over the years. I've tried more broad-based social media content. I've tried very specific niche content. It really does depend on who you believe your target market is and then hammering that home. 
because your answers are going to influence where you fit in and how you can grow your professional brand. And that leads us to step three, creating engaging content. Uh, the profile is nice, but a profile that shares content is nicer. This is important so that you can share your opinions on business matters that relate to your niche. But at the same time, you need to use your voice. An example here is I tried one time, I, I posted some content every day for about three weeks um, back in the day. And it was, and my goal was I need to see, I want to see increased engagement, more comments. I just want to see my profile getting some action. And um, I found I felt flat. I didn't really see much. I was posting kind of all over the place. And then I decided, and then I realized I looked back and I wasn't actually using my own voice. I was writing what I thought was going to get high engagement. Instead, I should have been actually writing what I cared about, what my actual opinion was, and how it related to my niche. I then turned around and posted a couple of what I call hot takes with uh, business related social media matters and my engagement and comments numbers took off much, much better. And that was because I was actually writing what I cared about, what I believed was where I could fit in in the niche. And I wasn't just trying to post what I thought others wanted to see first. Now, uh, a quick aside here, I do see a comment in here. Um, somebody mentioned that uh, it's their first time thinking of LinkedIn as a dynamic social media site. Um, do different fields have different expectations for this type of posting? Um, that's a good question, Graham, and I will say um, a little bit. It kind of depends. If you are in marketing and you are somebody who is expected to be a thought leader on this type of content like me, yes, the expectation is going to be a little bit different. People are going to expect me, if I'm applying to be a social media director somewhere, they're going to expect my level of LinkedIn posting to be significant, probably like the top 10%, top 5%. On the other hand, if you are not in a marketing, social media related field, say you're in a medical field, um, maybe you're in real estate, maybe you're in something else, um, it's not expected for you to be comment, for you to be posting every single day or even multiple times a week. As long as you're posting enough to stay active, to share your opinions on stuff, and for others in your network to see that and have a, a, a and kind of lead to a stronger brand awareness on your side, that's really what you're looking for, and that's the goal. Um, again, the, the amount of content and the expectations will vary, but I will say the people have commonly started to believe that posting on LinkedIn from a personal side doesn't need to be more than a couple of times per week. We have another question about LinkedIn getting rid of stories. Huh. Yes, great question, Tej. Um, so if you, you've probably seen that LinkedIn has the story functionality right now. Uh, they did this largely in response to every other social network doing stories. You had stories from originally from Snapchat, then Instagram, so it worked really well there. Then you had Facebook where it's kind of doing okay. Then you have Twitter and then you have LinkedIn. Twitter has, a, has gotten rid of theirs, what they used to call fleets. And now LinkedIn will be doing away with their stories at the end of September. Honestly, I think LinkedIn just saw that nobody was using stories. Um, LinkedIn released some early data when uh, stories first came out, saying that people that post stories get seen more. Nobody bought that. Uh, instead, I think LinkedIn has realized that businesses, business-based social media is not the ephemeral marketing type. It's not the kind of thing that goes away after 24 hours. People want their content to exist long-term. I'm perfectly fine with people seeing my posts a week after I publish them. There's no issue with that. But as you mentioned in your post, in your uh, note here, LinkedIn investing in voice-based tech like Twitter, um, Twitter Spaces and with Clubhouse, that could be a more interesting uh, a future investment. Um, I won't get too much into the social or um, 
social audio as they call it, but something like Clubhouse where uh, you can share your, your um, thought leadership via, via voice and via audio, it definitely has a time and a place. Whether or not that place is LinkedIn yet really remains to be seen. LinkedIn has really found some great success with how they exist right now, and that is the professional social network. Whether or not the bells and whistles that were from social audio, from stories, or if they were to add some longer form video knocking tick or imitating TikTok comes through, I have no idea. Um, but I will say, as long as you can utilize LinkedIn's uh, publishing abilities to to your advantage, then I would say just go for it. Um, I think they will invest in voice-based tech eventually to answer your question, but I also think they're reeling from the failure that was stories. And that's a great segue into step number four, and that is engaging with other people. It's really important to like, comment, and share others' posts. Um, the last step being kind of to, to create your own content and to share your thoughts. Um, step four is to respond to others. And I actually look at steps three and four as a, as a combination, kind of one big step broken into two. Because being able to share your opinions happens in terms of publishing content and reacting to others. Um, a, some, a, an interesting thing I found was a little LinkedIn hack, if you will, that somebody posted this and I tested it and it worked really well for me a couple of times. The best way to get your posts seen by others is to do the following. First, log on to LinkedIn and comment and engage with others' posts. Don't just say, great job, or I like it, but to add some real and original thoughts to others' posts. That could be people that are asking questions, people that have polls, um, anything. If you do that for about a half an hour, responding to, I don't know, six to 10 posts, then go back to your profile and write your post. Don't just say, okay, this is my thought in one sentence and be done, but provide a longer form original thought, almost like a micro blog post and publish that to your page. It's really important that it goes beyond the read more thing that you'll see on your post on the post is, you know, it goes longer than two lines. Um, the limit for a LinkedIn post, I believe is 750 or a thousand characters. So you have a lot of space. You can write fairly long form posts. If you put some good engaging um, not necessarily controversial, but thought-provoking tips or, or thought-provoking content into your post, uh, that's going to get you bonus points. From there, LinkedIn is going to put your post out there and show it to some people. You're going to get some impressions. You have a, a couple hours of a window there where that's going to determine how far and wide your LinkedIn post spreads. If people immediately start engaging with your post, commenting, liking, or whatever the other uh, reactions are, LinkedIn is going to continue to share your post with more people. And thanks to you spending that first half an hour um, engaging with others' posts, LinkedIn is going to give it a little extra boost. That, that first couple of hours is going to be important. Not only do you want to see people comment to you on your post, but you want to then respond to those comments. You probably, and if you want to share a link, put that in the comments as well. Don't put the links in the body of your post. We'll get to that at the end. Um, the more that people re respond to your post, and if you respond to their comments, your LinkedIn post is only going to be seen by more and more people. The algorithm, just like every other social network is, that the, if LinkedIn considers your post to be engaging and leading to um, more reactions from people, the wider it's going to spread. Uh, I've done this now three times in the last three weeks and have seen that my posts have reached um, almost about 90% of my following. Um, whereas if, if it was just, if I just hopped online, quickly did a post and left, I'd probably reach about 20% of my followers. 
So I don't have a huge sample size for you doctoral students out there. No, this is not statistically significant, but based on my knowledge of social networks, um, I can tell you that that way is probably going to get you see, get your post seen by more people than if you just pop on, publish a, a new post and leave. Let's take this uh, time really quickly to answer a couple of questions that have come in to the chat. Um, what's the best way to get the attention of those in your career field for networking opportunities? That's a great question. Um, I would say there's, in terms of networking, there is really um, two things to do. And actually one of them is, is in this next slide. One is to stay active. You don't have to post every single day, but if you are consistently on LinkedIn, and that's going to capture some, it's at least some attention. Um, really, if you really wanna get tactical about it, think about your career field and think about if you know of any, any thought leaders. They could be local, they could be national, they could be international. Go and follow those people. Most of those people have a follow button on their LinkedIn profile now instead of connect. I have also put the follow button, not because I have a bazillion followers, but because I want to keep salespeople away from me. Um, if you go and follow those people, you'll see their content in your, on your LinkedIn page, in your feed. Go and leave comments. Engage with them. And they'll probably, they'll react to you. That'll lead you to some more um, contacts. And the chances are good that if you are following thought leaders in your field, so too are those that are hiring managers or recruiters or people that have the same interests as you. And by them seeing your activity on these fairly high profile names, the better that's going to look and, just, uh, and reflect on you as a, as a user. We do have another question here. What type of user generation, user generated content do you see that makes an impact? So Tej, I will say this, the number one type of user-generated content that seems to work are presentations. When we're done here, I'm gonna take this presentation, I'm gonna post it on LinkedIn. LinkedIn uses a slide share type of technology um, where you can see the slides right into, in your um, browser. I will find that my slides will probably reach my entire follow-up without doing anything, without me having to go through the 30 minutes before engaging with other people's content, immediately responding to comments. LinkedIn loves slides. They love them. Not necessarily because it automatically assumes thought leadership, but because people engage with slides more than they engage with regular posts. Instead of just reading text, there's something for them to click through. And there's 22 slides in this presentation so that they're going to be, people are gonna be more likely to go through, they're gonna stay in my post longer um, and they're going to absolutely be more engaged with that than if I just, even if I type this all out. So I highly recommend presentations or slides. Um, LinkedIn has said that videos um, and photos are gonna help. I personally have not seen photos make a huge difference. Um, videos do. Videos are going, I posted an original video, don't post a link to YouTube. Upload an original video uh, to LinkedIn and you will see really good results. It's gonna take a while. It's not gonna be delivered to your entire audience instantly like presentations will. But over the course of a couple of days, you're probably going to see those numbers gradually increase. Um, the last video I did, I think I only reached like 200 people the same day. I was really bummed and disappointed. But by the end of the week, um, I had reached about 90% of my followers. So uh, highly recommend it. Videos, especially if they're first person videos, it's like you talking to the screen, if you scan your phone, you're gonna do, you're gonna get a lot more engagement. It's a lot more personal. It's your face. It's not something else. It's gonna do a lot better than if it was just text. Another question here, uh, here's a good one how to increase the reach of posts by company pages. So I'm guessing most of you do not post on behalf of company pages here, but I'm gonna talk about this anyways. Um, company pages 
a lot of you probably follow company pages, you know, a handful. Um, I have been trying to figure out how to increase the reach of company pages for years. And I have found two ways that are foolproof ways to reach a wider audience. However, um, you can't post these every single day. One, the presentation. I have a company page that I post for probably four times a week. Normally I'll share links. Um, those, will, you know, those don't reach a ton of people. If I post photos, they do okay. But number one, if I post slides from my CEO, my client CEO who has um, actually turned around and done a presentation like this one here, it's gonna reach everybody. It's absolutely, it's absolutely successful. The second part though, is to post, a po write a post about somebody else. This works on your personal pages too. Giving a shout out to somebody, um, talking about a connection positively, of course. Uh, I would say um, the, looking at other thought leaders and giving them kudos is going to really do wonders for your post because all of your shared connections are going to see it. Almost all of their connections are going to see it and you're going to instantly see a really nice growth. Uh, so that's really a, a good side, good thing for both company pages and for personal pages. In terms of like those big winners, presentations, posts about connections, those help for both professional, for both personal pages and company pages. But from there, you know, it's all about trial and error. Okay. So let's take a look at some quick best practices. Photos with faces are gonna be good. They're, those are, they'll help. I don't think they're gonna reach everybody. They're not as good as presentations, um, but again, it's better than just text. Some anecdotal uh, research here has told me that the best time to post is between 10 a.m. and noon with the single best day being Thursday. I don't know, I haven't seen a, for, again, for you doctoral students out here, I have not seen a statistical significant difference here. Um, I put this anyways, just because I've seen this on multiple other reputable sites, so it might be the case. Um, posts without links receive more views. If you put a link in your, in the body and the actual meat of your post, you will probably reach 10 to 15% of your followers. LinkedIn does not want people leaving LinkedIn. If you put a post, if you put a link in your post and people click on your link, they're leaving LinkedIn. So it is in LinkedIn's best interest as a business to downgrade posts without posts with links, but you can get around that. What I do is I'll write my post and then I will put the link into the comments. Now, I will say in text, like, hey, in parentheses, uh, a link in comments. I actually just did that right before this, posting a link to this. And I think some of you registered for the, that very reason. Um, I think LinkedIn is catching on to us there though. So it is now, I'm now trying to figure out a creative way to say, here's an article that I'm sharing. I'm not telling you that the link is in the comments, but it's in the comments. Um, I honestly haven't seen any difference in reach from the company page side with this. Um, but on the personal side, again, I will reach 15% of my following tops when it comes to when I, when I post a link, unless it's the most amazing link in the world, which I think has happened once. If I post that link in, my, in a comment immediately after I publish it, um, it'll do wonders. Finally, Write your posts differently from other social networks. This is really, really important. You need to make this about professional takeaways and about learning outcomes. Making them all about your trip to Italy or uh, say it's somebody's birthday. Those types of things are just not gonna work. Um, sure, you might get some likes, you might get some comments, but overall, it's probably not gonna resonate the same as if you put that on Facebook or Instagram. So it's really, really important that you write your post from a professional point of view on LinkedIn. 
finally, this is my last slide. So please keep start sharing your um, questions and comments in the chat. LinkedIn is an extremely powerful social networking tool in the business world. Um, I have used it um, tremendously, both from a networking standpoint for job opportunities, but also in for business, new business opportunities. Um, I've talked to potential gra prospective graduate students on LinkedIn, promoted um, Wayne State, the business school, the other schools and colleges, because they'll see me in there, they'll see me out there posting content, and it's a connection that I might know, or even if I barely know them. But LinkedIn makes it a very welcoming opportunity to message somebody and to learn more about what they do and what you're trying to do. And this social network's only going to grow in the coming years. Uh, now is really the time to build that foundation, build that base. LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft. Microsoft is investing in this social network. And it's really, really important that, uh, that you realize that this isn't going anywhere. This is not a fad. Um, it's not gonna see a decline, especially as millennials and Gen Z become the uh, kind of the main operatives of, of business. So too will LinkedIn as a social network. Finally, it is important to remain professional, but you should still have fun. You should still enjoy what you're writing. Take it seriously, but don't be too serious. Um, if, there's, if there's one thing I've learned that pertains to both LinkedIn and life, it's important to be serious and have goals, but at the same time, uh, you need to enjoy what you're doing while you're going along. So that's, uh, that wraps up my actual um, session here. I am going to take questions. Um, I do see uh, another couple of questions here. Um, so let's, first off, yes, um, Irina, you will have access to the recording afterwards. So quickly answer your question. Um, let's jump down really quick here to Graham. Um, is there anything that we shouldn't be posting or can? Um, so I would say I would not post anything that is over controversial. By controversial, I mean things that are um, illegal, things that are political, things that are religious in nature. I would not share those unless they really have some, some major business outcomes for you. Now, you could take that trip to Italy and spin it, like you mentioned in your comment, into something around business, but that would mean that you are taking your trip to Italy and talking about how it is, say an inspiration for your new entrepreneurial spirit, or say you're gonna start a, a winery or something or a wine club and what you saw in Italy on your trip inspired you. Those things are great. You can spin it correctly, absolutely. Um, but it's really important to do that and to make sure that you don't just post photos of you in a you know, vineyard and say, I love my trip. Instead, it's, you need to turn it into something where it's about the business takeaways. Something that a, a think about a, a decision maker at a business is going to look at and think like, oh, that is inspiring. That is motivational. This is not to say you can't post hot takes. I try to post hot takes on my LinkedIn page. I just don't think I have it in me to have a ton of hot takes in marketing. Because um, every time I do, I get like two comments and it's just two people that agree with me. Um, and honestly, the hot takes like on every other social network are going to get the most engagements as are the controversial comment statements, but they don't reflect well on your brand. Um, another question is LinkedIn integrating video technology within messaging. So if you have been on LinkedIn recently, you've probably seen that you can start a video chat within LinkedIn messaging. Uh, I personally have not like done it yet. Um, but it is, I, I really think that it's LinkedIn's response to Zoom. Uh, right now, you see a lot of messaging, like if you're in the job market, chances are you'll, uh, re maybe you'll reach out to somebody or a recruiter will reach out to you, say, hey, we're interested in, interested in interviewing you for this position. Here's a Zoom link. LinkedIn, again, like I mentioned before, they want to keep people on LinkedIn. So why not introduce video capabilities right on the platform? So in terms of interviews, business meetings, uh, that's gonna be a really nice way to cut out the middleman and cut out the annoying, like, oh, let me schedule a new Zoom meeting, put the link in the chat. 
But again, I haven't done this yet. I haven't had anybody try to do this yet. Um, it will be interesting to see if it takes off and if the usage takes off over the coming months. Um, in terms of building your brand, I don't think it's a, I don't really think it goes one way or the other. I think it's just in general, um, a good interviewing and, and um, pitch idea. Um, finally, uh, we have a question about recommended platforms for the online portfolio. Going back to an earlier slide, um, I would recommend Squarespace, WordPress, Wix. Those are really the three big ones. Um, you can also use actual like portfolio specific sites. Uh, but if you want to build a website for yourself, I would recommend using one of the easy ones. Um, if you're going to build a portfolio, just a quick comment, um, be sure to actually have a plan and know what you're going to be posting. If you just post one page and walk away, that's not going to really work. You want to have a significant, substantial online rec uh, representation of your work online. Um, how can this platform benefit undergrad students? Okay, it does a lot of self-taught tech projects. So it, to answer your question quickly, um, Colette J, yes, I recommend getting on LinkedIn quickly. Uh, get on LinkedIn, put your experience on there, put your resume out there. Um, it really doesn't matter how much or how little experience you have. You will find if when you get on LinkedIn and go find some, some thought leaders, some people that are big in the industry that you're in, start following them. You're going to find that it's very easy to learn from these people. I personally, every day when I log on to LinkedIn, I will log off having learned at least two to three new things that I had never learned before. To me, that's only started in the last couple of months because I've been very intentional about following um, people that are industry titans, digital marketing leaders. They could be national figures. It doesn't matter how big or how small their following is. Um, the fact is that people, you, people that post on LinkedIn, they're posting good intelligence stuff. It's rare that you're gonna see a useless post. It's not like Facebook where you're like, oh gosh, there's so-and-so again. This is, this is a place where people are trying to post um, good, engaging, educational, inspirational content. And to me, there's no downside to this side of LinkedIn where you can log on, take a look around and really uh, embrace something new. Um, another question is, are there any good resources for having someone review your profiles and strategically coming up with uh, specific ways to make them better? I would say just start with your own close network. Um, I mean, I guess I am, I could help, help you too, but I would say if you have a trusted um, person who is, who is familiar with your, um, with your online persona, someone who's familiar with your industry and somebody who you trust, uh, they will give you an honest assessment. Uh, but it's really important to have somebody that's in your space. For me, um, you know, I, I um, am in marketing, so I'm looking for people, like I interact with people there. I wouldn't go to somebody who has never been on LinkedIn, for example, to, to get takeaways and advice. I'd look for somebody who I look up to in the professional world um, and really try to get their feedback. So um, that's really, you know, I don't have the best answer to that one there, Graham, but uh, that's about all I can find. Any questions from anybody? Any additional questions, whether in the chat or you can just uh, unmute yourselves and ask a question? Nothing. We've had a lot of questions over the course of this session already. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for, uh, for joining me today. Um, I think this was, you know, I got a lot of good questions here and I welcome any and all follow-ups. I'll be posting these slides on my LinkedIn page um, later today, and we will be sending out a survey to those of you who attended today. Um, and then finally, of course, uh, the recording will be available afterwards on the grad school website. Um, so if nothing else, enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for attending.